Green sleeves. Let's learn how to play this classic melody from the 16th century that also doubles as a Christmas carol in the form of what child is this? So we're going to be playing this uh, in the key uh, of E minor technically, but uh, the tuning will be standard G on the banjo, and we'll go over that in just a minute. Uh, before we get uh, started with the tab walkthrough, let me go ahead and play for you the uh, version that uh, I just released on the channel that we're going to be going through the tab for. So here is uh, the green, here is green sleeves that we're going to learn. Okay, there it is, Green Sleeves. Nice, uh, so if you'll notice there, and we'll go over this in just a second, that that is converted from its standard 3-4 uh, time signature to a 2-4 time signature, so from triple meter to duple meter. We'll get to that in just a second. Um, first, let's tune up the banjo. So we're standard G tuning, D on the fourth string, G on the third, B on the second, D on the first, G on the fifth. So I'm gonna play through the introduction that I played in that song in that demonstration, which was in three four time, the standard time signature for this song, and then we'll also play through the tab for the uh, main version, which is in two four time. So just to demonstrate how we do that, and that's a common, we, we did this on House of the Rising Sun as well, common convention to banjify a tune, uh, to give it that um, even pulsation, is to take a 3-4 song and, and transform it into 2-4. So if we go to a start with a 3-pulse with a rhythm, 1, 2, 3, 1, 2, 3, 3, 1, that's the typical way we're used to hearing green sleeves. Now we're going to change that to a one two pulse. One two, one two, one two. So those two versions that I played, the introduction, which was in standard 3-4, and then the uh, second part, the main part, which was converted to 2-4, kind of trains your ear to hear that how that how that all works. Um, so think about that as I'm going through this uh, <clears throat> tablature. So let's start again with the... Actually, let's first um, go over the chord positions real quick. I put them on the screen. Since we're playing this out of E minor, we're using some chords that you're not as used to playing for... Um, in this tuning, um, at least not as not as familiar as the chords you typically would use in G uh, G major 
key. So the first one we have here is this E minor, which you can play it up here with open strings, but on this version, we're gonna be down, we're gonna be typically playing it out of this closed chord position. So you have the fifth fret on strings four, middle finger on fifth fret on the fourth string, index is on the uh, fourth fret of the third string. So yes, fourth fret of third string. Ring is on fifth fret of the second string. Pinky is on fifth fret of the first string. Okay, and then you have this full fingered, or this bar chord across the seventh fret for a D major. Then you have your familiar C major shape. So, ba, ba, ba. whoops. <laughs> And then we've got this fourth, this bar across the fourth fret for a B major. And then the other place to, that I have here is this bar across the twelfth fret. In the song, you'll actually see we're just going to be playing. We're only going to be fretting the second and first strings at the first fret, which, if you play it with the open strings, is still a G major. Okay, so those are your chord shapes to know for the song. Now, and, and as we're playing through this tab, it's a good idea to be making those shapes with your fingers, even when you're just playing individual notes. All right, <clears throat> let's go through and play this little intro, okay? And here, we're actually doing a bit of uh, what you'd call chord melody for some of these, where we're strumming across the strings, and the high note, uh, the note that's on the first string, is the melody note. So. Starts like this. So again, as per, as for our usual convention, I will use this um, blue box to denote where we are. So it just starts with this introductory note. Again, we're fingering this E, made, e minor chord, and then we have this. This measure sounds like this. So just rush across that chord, and then go to that seventh fret, and then to the ninth fret. Okay, so everything at the top of the screen sounds like this. Now, next measure, we're going to bar that 7th fret for that D chord, and then just play that 2nd string. Next measure, sounds like this. We're just keeping our finger on that bar chord. Back up to the E minor for another brush. So this, everything at the top of the screen sounds like this. Okay, now we're gonna move to the C chord, standard C chord up the neck, I mean, <clears throat> down the neck. So just brush crush. And now we're going to this B major, which is our fourth bar chord across the fourth fret. And now end here. Okay, so everything at the top of the screen. Now this last note starts us again, second time through this melody. So we're gonna finger that fifth and then bring back to the E minor shape again, just like before. This is the same. Sorry. Again, this measure. So this whole, this whole everything at the top of the screen sounds like this. Sorry. Again, same as before, just a little variation at the end. And here comes the variation. E minor, that's different. So, bar that fourth fret. So everything at the top of the screen sounds like this. Sorry. One more time. Now, this last bit <clears throat> sounds like, oops, <clears throat> here 
E minor again. But if you can, strum those first three, the fourth, third, and second string and leave the first string unstrummed so that it doesn't ring out as much. And then just close like that. Okay? So that's the intro if you choose to play it or not. But that kind of uh, is a nice way too to get, get us familiar with these chord positions. Um, and again, remember this one's played in that 3-4 time signature. So now let's move to the kind of the main arrangement. Bring that up on the screen. Okay, so now this is the main arrangement that we played. Okay, now again, walk through these. So again, we're gonna be playing out of these same chord positions uh, as before. So starts the same way. And then now this measure sounds like this. I'm sorry. So one more time. So again, just to be clear, the second part of this measure starts with a skip stroke. Then we drop thumb to the fifth fret of the second string. Then we go to the seventh fret of the first string. So that whole measure. Okay, down to the ninth fret. Again, this. Now we're going to be barring across the seventh fret. This measure sounds like this. So again. Everything at the top of the screen sounds like this. Sorry. Same same figure before, except as I mean as the um, second measure. I just leave off that fifth string after that brush to emphasize that chord because that's like the that's the melody note there. Okay. Now, if you wanted to play this straight without the drop thumbs and the syncopations, something like this. Something like that. So that's, again, straight up, no drop thumbs, no syncopation like this version. All right, let's go to the next measure. All right, still at our seventh fret, sounds like this. Again. Back to our E minor. Just like before. Up to our C major. to our B major. See a lot of these figures here in this song where we have this bum ditty and then bump a ditty, but the with the bump and the bump a ditty being a skip stroke. Or without syncopation. Okay? So everything at the top of the screen sounds like this. Okay, let me see, let's see, without syncopation, it could sound like this. Okay, something like that, just to give you an idea. Whoops, skip too far ahead. So we've played kind of one time through. Now we got, we do the same thing again with the ending slightly different, just as before. So this part, this first measure. So when we drop thumb there, you notice it's the fifth fret because we're playing that first note. So again, just as before, as is this, as is this. like that. All right, back to the original version. This measure, just as before. Back to E minor, and here's where it differs from what we did already. So this measure, then 
we go to the B again, fourth fret barring. Back to E minor. So everything at the top of the screen sounds like this. Okay, now we're about to go into the B part, which we haven't played at all. Here we go, leading into it. Now this next measure starts the B part. We're gonna go all the way down to the 12th fret, fingering the 12th fret, first string, second string. So again, same pattern as before, bum diddy, bump a diddy. But I'm gonna skip stroke and bring my thumb to the first string. So again. Okay, this measure, again, back to the D major of 7th fret, okay, so everything at the top of the screen sounds like this. Okay, let's see if we could simplify it. it. Might sound like this. Sorry. So something like that. Okay, to make it straight. Not, not a syncopated without that drop thumb. Oops, went ahead too far. Here we go, whoops. Here we go. All right, we're still in that seventh fret. And this is familiar territory because it recycles uh, melodic material from the first part. Oops, right here is where I am, E minor. Back to the C major chord, and to this B, 4th fret bar. See, it's just closing out the same way we closed out the A part. Again, here it is. Now we're going back to the beginning of this B part again. That's that part again. We have that bum ditty. Skip stroke, drop thumb. Slowly. So maybe a little tricky to think about dropping your thumb to the first string, but something I do quite a bit comes in really handy. This next measure. Just as before. Last measure up here. Just as before. So everything at the top of the screen sounds like this. All right. Next measure, still on this bar shape. Just as before, we're gonna close it out a little different. Back to the E minor. To the B major, back to the E minor, and the last note is just that second string, fifth fret. Everything at the top of the screen sounds like this. Okay, let's see, a little simpler could be choices will work fine. Okay, and that's it. So, again, uh, I think I rated this one as a Brain Joe level four, um, largely because 
It's got the syncopations, the drop thumb to the first string, as well as these figures, these fully chord position, fully uh, fingered chords that you're playing out of, including going up the neck. So a little more intricate than sometimes what you might uh, be used to, but a totally um, doable melody. And as I demonstrated, there are ways of playing it uh, simpler than what I have here. And I would encourage you to, to first, if, if, it, if it does feel a little bit com complicated for you, to just first start by playing, the, finding the tune from these chord positions and playing a basic version like I demonstrated and then adding in these other uh, elements as you, uh, as you feel comfortable with. All right, that is all for Green Sleeves. Again, uh, this is a song that you can play. It is a Christmas carol in, in, in one form, but it's also uh, not a Christmas song in another form. So if it's Christmas time, you could say you're playing What Child Is This? If it's not Christmas time, you can pl you say you're just playing Green Sleeves. So you can play this one year round. You don't have to be relegated to the holiday season. All right, that's a pro tip for you. All right, thanks for watching. Uh, let me know if you have any questions in the Brain Joe Virtual Classroom, and I will see you in the next episode.